the next piece is time. So this is what I wanted to get to. So if we click on time, we can see we've got this kind of two tone orange and blue. It's quite, quite visually striking because that's what we've got is a cost of 2000 in total because two parts of it. If I select the other, the specialist, well, it's now selecting um, uh, the orange is the selected part. So there's a thousand cost for specialist and then the other cost is down here. So if we were to add uh, another cost, say under plant, so let's call this one. So this could be, some, I don't know, dumper trucks and these might be very expensive. They might be, say, 3,000, but we might only need one of them and we're certain we're only going to need one. So there's going to be no uncertainty. It's, it's say a lump sum fixed price, 3,000 for a dumper truck, only need one of them. So now you can see that if we click on, say, the labour, the proportion has changed. So we've got most of this cost is actually coming from the dumper truck and it's no longer an even split between orange and blue. Um, if I click on dumper trucks, there's the, the, that's, that's all of its cost. And then this is the 1000 a piece down here in the blue. So up to 2000, so we can sort of see that visually. Now you can see that just to the left of this is showing us we can fix in place when in time we're gonna spend this money. And you can see that there is on along this graph, this histogram, along the bottom is time. So we can change, you know, we're looking at this per day, per week, per month, or quarter and year, but this is effectively going to be cash flow. So we could say that the dumper trucks are going to kind of come in late in the schedule. Um, and we could say that maybe we're going to hire the general site labor and the, to begin with, then the specialist. So you can program out in time when in time you're going to spend these monies on these resources. So you've got a few different options. So we can clearly expand that and just fix a time and date. So that's today. So maybe we're going to spend the money today. And we're going to finish, I don't know, it could be in a week's time. So there's a very dramatic kind of change in the profile there. Uh, I'm actually still on dumper trucks. So the, the vast majority of the cost is uh, is coming out today. And then we're going to profile some of that cost out over the rest of time. If you prefer, you could have gone to uh, a little toggle here and said, select the date from the schedule and the start and the finish dates. So you can say, well, actually, uh, this is dumper trucks. So we're not going to need those till, say, the middle. So the, the third item and the schedule. And then we're going to end it right the way at the, at the very final activity. So there's the dumper trucks spread over time and then the general site labor is we could do something similar and we could start it on day one and we could finish it again we might have that all the way to the end because you're going to have general site labor throughout the duration of the entire project so that spread its cost over time to that point and you might only need the specialist at a very particular point in time so let's say we're only going to need them in activity two And again, it's going to finish on activity two. So there's a 10 day period where we're going to spend that money. So we've got that kind of spike. Now I can profile it out in weeks or months, quarters, which kind of groups all together in years because it's all happening in the same year. And there it is in days. Let's pop it back to weeks. So in this last video, you've just seen the deterministic cash flow. So where in time are you expecting to spend the money? And of course, if you've then linked those things to activities in the schedule, the schedule is also linked to risk and uncertainty, and that's going to move around. So that means that it's not going to be static. So a bit like how you might have seen a QSRA have a risk adjusted Gantt chart, moving the positions, the probabilistic position of the activities in time well that's going to do something similar in cost right so we cover that and introduce that uh, in the next video so that's a pcf probabilistic cash flow that's video 12. Uh, however if you're looking for some alternative methods uh, to link cost to time there's a few other ways of doing it so skip to video 13 um or uh, uh, 
a method that uses formulas and variables, that kind of thing. Or video 14, if you actually want to find the simplest way of doing it, or arguably the simplest way of doing it, and it uh, automatically uh, creates prolongation calculations and things like that for you. So that's video 14. Okay.